Hey, this is Daniel Richards, the progressive liberal. I want you to remember to vote Democrat, turn this country around, continue listening to one of the best out there, the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling, the show about pro wrestling and everything else. The show about nothing. Oh. But it's not funny, unlike Seinfeld. Look who's back. It's funny. Look who's back. I've been here. I don't know where you are. No, don't start that crap. I've been here. Don't start that. You know, the, the fans asked me if I fired you. Yeah. And I told them. Don't do me any favors, No, I'm not, going, I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of firing him. I'm going to keep this guy. All right? It's a torture. You've been messing around. Listen, I'm living my best life, okay? <laughs> what you and mean? as you can tell, uh, I have the flu, <laughs> yeah, and I have coughed. Life. I have coughed all over your equipment that you're sitting I'm in. Not right happy now. about that. So, uh, not happy. Congratulations, about that. you'll yeah. be getting the flu. Wow, and, um, thanks. I came off my deathbed hmm. to do this stupid show tonight. So, well, you weren't here for for Christmas. You weren't nope. here for my birthday. You weren't here for anything. The Lord rested on that day, and so was I. Oh, good job. You and your birthday. Get out of here. Good job. What your did you birthday. get for Christmas, Boston Bad Boy? Nothing. Good. That's what you deserve. I don't want anything. I have enough junk in my house. I don't yeah. want any more. You do have a lot of I junk. I want less. Yeah. Less of you, yeah. less of everything. Mm. That's what I want for Christmas. Someone you, someone get me that for Christmas. Less Duke in my life. You know what? You know what? I got you uh, some extra things for your, your model train set. Oh, you think and so? And I took them back. Yeah, I bet you did. I took them back because you, know, you weren't I, here I, last I have week. no room on my model train set for your crap. Oh, okay. I don't want it there. Yeah. Your second-rate crap you're going to buy. The Boston Bad Boy has a model train set, folks. Yeah, what of it? That would make Mr. Rogers blush. Yeah, it's so what of it? amazing. You know, Ric and, Flair uh, has model trains. So what? All right. What's your Avid point? Avid collector. Okay. What's your point? Undertaker. Yeah. Avid collector of model trains. Undertaker? That's right. Are you kidding me? These guys, it's all their generation. Wow. Huh. Maybe I should get into model trains. Just telling you. Hmm. No. You know what? You can't. It's not for you. Oh, okay. It requires patience. It requires hmm. imagination. Wow. It requires... Uh, uh, intellect, you don't have any of those things. <laughs> just, you, you better stick to just, you know. He hasn't missed a beat, has he, Playing with your putts. Wow. Well, listen, mm. Boston Bad Boy. Be back. Well, well, while you've been gone, there's mm. been a lot going on in the world of professional wrestling. Really? A lot that I don't care about? Well, there's been a lot that's going on. All right, what do you got? The McMahons are back. Oh, God, how can we miss them if they won't go away? They're back on Raw and on SmackDown. Because you got to keep in mind, we're on the road to WrestleMania. Okay? So... Vince, Stephanie, Shane, and Triple H will okay. be on TV twice a week, every week from now oh to whenever. Oh, my God. Okay? It's a big deal. The hubris. The hubris that anybody wants to look at their friggin' faces. Everybody does. Nobody wants to. Everybody wants to look at their face. No. Okay? Absolutely not. In fact, one of the top stories is the fact that AJ Styles punched Vince McMahon in the face this week. He's my new favorite wrestler. He punched him in the face. My new favorite wrestler. It was pretty impressive. You know, well, Vince slapped him first. Okay. So, folks, did you see this on SmackDown? Vince McMahon said he wants to see the animal. I want to see the animal come out of you. And then he so punch, punch. smacked him. See that? So he punched him in the face. AJ punched him in the face and then Can I punch you him. in the face? I will. And show you the animal? If I slap you, you're not even going to get a chance to come back. You would slap me. That, that's a move you would do. You do. You would do a slap. The only reason why I won't slap you because I know you'll sue me. So I'm not oh, going to yeah. play that game with you. But <laughs> Vince McMahon, got a cough. and he looks his age too. He's pretty. He's getting up there. Boy, I don't know. know. And he he took a, a flat back bump after he got punched. So it's like if I can do it, then you can do it. That's what he's telling the whole. Here's a question: You think uh, McMahon has CTE? Ooh, he's taking a couple of hits. He's taking more than a couple of hits. Been in the business a long time. Ooh, Let's if, throw that one at you. If if Vince. You know, we'll put up a poll. Do you think Vince McMahon has CTE? If he has it, then everyone has it. Because he hasn't wrestled as many matches as the wrestlers. Triple H. Keep that in mind. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, all these guys. Wow. Can you imagine? That I'm would just be telling bad. you. That would be bad. I don't like that. Don't put that stuff in my head. Listen. Don't put that stuff in my head. I don't like it. You put CTE in your head. No, nah, you're, you're not going to knock, knock your head against the wall. Well, listen. Another top story. Daniel Bryan. Oh, boy. He's the new Speaking Daniel Bryan. Of- no, he's a new. I think you would like this, Daniel Bryan. What did he get? A new skeleton? I don't know what that. What? Stop that. What the man of about? glass. Well, he's finally wrestling his style that he wants to wrestle, which is not as dangerous as the style that you and I have pointed out through the years. He's taking less risk, and yep. what he's doing is telling more of a story in the ring. Isn't it still that he could die at any moment? 
I don't know why you do this. Well, this is what you told me. I'm going off your information, but I don't know Mr. Why you, but a wrestling but you, expert. You say that like it's it's you know, like you you. It's reality. Relish in this. Yeah. No, you relish in it. You, the wrestling fan, want to see your your boy die in the ring. That's what this is. It's a blood sport. Give me a break. It's disgusting. Listen, listen to this. And this is a quote from Daniel Bryan. Okay, because he said he felt trapped doing things the old way when he came back. It's interesting because the new Daniel Bryan can't be defined without the old Daniel Bryan. It's kind of self-loathing, more so than anything else. I hated what I became. I hated what I represented. The good things about myself that I had taken pride in for many, many years just kind of fall into the wayside in this idea of expectations of what Daniel Bryan was. And even just my mindset, the mindset of the old Daniel Bryan, he fought so hard to come back, and when he came back, he was just happy to be back. He wasn't fighting for anything. You know, it's this kind of verbal diarrhea which makes me miss the days before social media. Are you serious right now? I didn't pay attention to one word you said because it's just crap. Go to hell. You What's know what? wrong with you? This, enough already with this guy. It's not compelling. It's not a compelling story. He's very compelling. It's not a compelling story. He's very compelling. No. He's, he's amazing. No. It, and you know what? He said he wants to take the leather belt because he's champion now. Mm. And he wants to get rid of the leather because he's a vegan and he's into all that stuff. You see what's going on here? What? You're a mark. And you're getting played for a half-assed, half-baked story. I don't like that. I don't like what you're saying. Right I'm now. just telling you. I don't like what you're saying right now. Company's being run by a man who has a brain condition, and it's starting to show. Shout out to Daniel Bryan. I like the new thing that you have going on there. Um, seriously, I like it. Now, was he in the fake marriage with the other fake marriage that was going on? No, Daniel Bryan's marriage is real. Okay. Stop that. Don't do that. The other one is fake. Don't do that. The other one was a work. Do not do that. I'm just saying. I'm trying to keep track. Don't do You're that. You're the one that watches all the reality television. Well, listen. It, it, John Cena said, do not bring up my ex. When you interview John, I'm going to tell the world about this. This is another top story. I'm going to tell the world about this because I, I, I personally, I'm, I'm taking offense to this. You, you ham and eggers out there bringing up Nikki Bella when you interview John Cena. Okay? That's like saying, hi, uh, Neil Armstrong. I'm going to talk to you about all the times you didn't walk on the moon. What, it's part of what he. It's part of the. It's it's the work. It's no, no, the, no, 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 no. Do not. You don't want anybody bringing up your exes. Don't bring up his exes. They couldn't find them all. <laughs> That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> and first of all, I'm not stupid enough to have a television show. Well, he's not going to be on that television show anymore. Lucky him. Do not bring up John Cena's ex when you talk to him. Period. Ex. Don't ex. bring her up. Okay. There's no way his penis works anyway. Stop that. All the working Stop out. That. Stop that. Probably the pills. Stop that. The enhancements. You know, John Cena said that he he apologized to The Rock. Everyone should apologize to The it's Rock. It's another top story here. He apologized to The Rock because he used to knock The Rock for not wrestling enough while he was out in Hollywood. But Cena says- You know what? Because The I Rock was it. too busy making money. Well, that's what he said. He said, I get it now. Because if I'm wrestling and, and Seth Rollins pushes my nose the other way, then they have to stop movie production. Yeah. It ruins and, and, everything. And the insurance company for the movie isn't going to let that and happen. all those people working on the movie- Right, counting on, on not, The Rock being there. So John Cena apologized to The Rock for that. See, this is how stupid John Cena is. He couldn't think of that himself? I know that. I'm not a movie star or nor a wrestler. You work in entertainment and media. Don't don't pull that crap. Don't pull that crap. All I'm saying is The Rock is a real wrestler because he kept his personal life out of it for the most part. Oh, my goodness. Here we that go. was back when you could just be a wrestler, and if you were good enough, you'd have to go all these reality show bullshit. Oh, okay. okay? Yeah. Cena wears his dungarees. He can't hack it as a movie star. Mm. B-list at best. B-level movies. C-list celebrity. And, 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 and now a marriage that really no one cares about. But, you know, now don't ask him about it. Mm. It's telling when that's the only thing people want to ask him about. Stop it. Stop it. Shout out to John Cena. I don't know <coughs> what the hell's going on here. Just don't, don't do that. Don't do that. We had some issues here with um, UFC. Another top story. John Bones Jones tested positive again. Ah, yes. I saw this. And he has the big match coming up this week, Saturday, right? Oh, yeah. He has the big match coming Talking up. Talking a lot of smack on social media. They had to move the venue because, because Las Vegas him. would not sanction it. So they moved it up to California. Now, who's he fighting? He's fighting uh, Gustafsson, a guy who now, gave him a tough fight before. If, if, if I'm fighting you... Which I would love to do, by the way. I'd no, kill you in no, the ring. I, please. Just the pure hatred would come out Stop of me. Stop it right now. Um, and they say, okay, well, your match isn't going to be in Vegas where it's supposed to be. Mm. Because they won't sanction it. We're going to move the venue a week before, before. the match. And I, I'm still supposed to go in the ring with this guy? Can you imagine? For belts. That's baloney. 
Baloney. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. And, and let me say this. There's another fight on that card, which is going to be the biggest women's fight of all time. It's one of the most highly anticipated fights ever. Amanda Nunes, who mm-hmm. beat Ronda Rousey, by the way. Handily. beat the hell out of her, by the way. She beat the— Beat I, her so bad she had to change careers. I watched that match again. It wasn't even close. She beat the career right out of her. When she gave Rousey a, a stiff punch, Rousey was already out on her feet, and then Nunes just proceeded to beat the hell out of her. She didn't even miss. Every time she swung, she hit her. That was the end of that. <laughs> that was it. Rousey was done. Uh, against Chris Cyborg, who ah. is— you know, she's one of the greatest women's fighters of all time. Tough. That should be the main event. Yeah. Not this cheating bastard, John Jones. Yeah. Okay? I'm pissed about this. You know what? I'm pissed about it's this. It's a man's world. That's why this is happening. Pissed. It's the male gaze. Pissed. Why, why is the men's on top? Yeah, because they're men. But can you imagine? You pack up everything and move to another venue. Well, who's, say, who's allowing that to happen? Dana White in the UFC. Yeah, exactly. They're no good. And, and who's paying off these people to do this? If, if Vegas won't sanction it, how the hell is California going to sanction it? What's going on? Well, it doesn't make any sense. Huh? It's like, it's like, oh, we can't do it legally here. We're going to do it legally somewhere else. It's going to be all right. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm so pissed about this. I'm it's pissed. like, you know what? We're going to take our casino boat and go gambling 12 miles offshore. Yeah. It's shady. It's shady. It's shady. There's some shady business going on. You know what? Go to Las Vegas. You know go why? To, go to, because go to, all the mobsters and all the fools, they want, they want their gambling the money to be already, protected. The money's, the money's already been spent. Already, yep, that's what it is. That's, so here's here's the part that pisses me off. Let's say Jones wins the fight. Yeah. Do you give him the title? You can't. They're going to give him the title. They're going to do it. Now, does is, is the title then a fit? I mean, is it recognized by Las Vegas? Is it? You know what I mean? Like, and then here's the other part. Daniel Cormier, who's always done it right. Mm-hmm. Jones is still talking trash about him. He said, I'll, I'll walk up to your wife and slap her on the butt. That's what John Jones yep. said, talking trash, because he's trying to get Cormier to fight him again. Right. Because he knows he's illegitimate. Call me and say you're a, you're a dirty man. What am I? You know what I mean? I have nothing to do with you. You're dirty. Yeah. Pissed. Yeah. Pissed uh, about this. Dana White and the crew. They need to get their act together well, here. It's it's embarrassing. Well, because it's it's a little obvious what's going on. Sure. Sure. That's what you said. Yep. There's money. It's and there's always been money. We all know there's money. Yep. Yep. But you can't be like that about the money. I'm very embarrassed about this. It, you know, UFC, you have no credibility. And is, this is this? I mean, we, we have talked to to Reed and all. You know, yeah. this John Bones Jones guy. He's no good. No one likes him. He's no good. It's not like wow, we want really want to see Mike Tyson fight again. He's you fake. Know what I mean? He's fake. No, people want to see him. They probably want to see him lose. He's fake. But he's already losing. Yeah, well, he's a loser already. He's a loser. He is a loser. John Jones, I can't stand you, man. In fact, I want Daniel Cormier to fight you again just to beat your face in because I can't stand you so much. What was their official reasoning from the UFC? They said, this is the best part, whatever he tested positive for the last time, they're saying that it's still in his system like 18 months later. Well, then it's still in his system. Trace amounts. Then it is. That's the rules. But he passed other tests, and then he fails. Mm. Now, how was that possible? Because they couldn't pay off that one last guy. That's how that happened. It's embarrassing. You're going to tell me this isn't fixed? It's embarrassing. Well, it, 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 it calls into question... Uh, you know, the reliability of everything else that happens. Oh. The rest of the outcomes. Sure, sure, sure. How far was a step from, well, we moved the match to get around the sanction. Well, the guy was juicing. We let it happen. Well, the guy took a dive because, well, that was a better show hmm. because money's trading hands. Hmm. And I don't know that, but, but I'm, just, I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, you could see that there's potential for that happening. Something's wrong here. Something, something's very wrong. And I'm going to tell you right now, folks, if John Jones wins that fight, they'll be hell to pay. I'm just going to tell you that right now. The fight community is not going to put up with that. They can't. No. They shouldn't. Well, I, I don't know. That's the thing, because UFC has always been on the fringe, right? I mean, boxing wants really, sort of nothing. Mm. Boxing holds its nose. Mm. Wrestling is too good for UFC. Mm. They're in this middle. Middle where thing. They, yep. well, where they've always made their own rules. Mm. But at this point, they've been around 20 years-ish. Yep. yeah. I mean, what are you gonna, you got to do? You know, a lot of money. It's embarrassing. A lot of jobs, like you said. Other people, you know, people who work for them. What are they doing? It's embarrassing. The whole thing is embarrassing. But the number one story, and I'm going to say this is story of the year, Boston Bad Boy. Story of the year. Story of the year comes in right under the wire, apparently. Yep. Apparently, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Oh Jesus! And his wife Linda McMahon <sighs> were announced as the top donors. For the Donald Trump Foundation. 
<laughs> now, how did I not know that? I, I'm, I'm being honest you right now. I did one. not know that. Yeah. Because I was on vacation. I yeah. was uh, had a little bit of cold. Say that, to, say that again, just so I made sure I heard Vince you right. Vince and Linda combined. Uh-huh. They've donated more money. To the Trump Foundation. To the Trump Foundation than any other donors. The Trump Foundation, which has been dismantled under investigation from the New York Attorney General's office. Yes. For fraudulent use of funds. Yes. That's what you mean. That's what I mean. That that Trump that Foundation. Trump Foundation. Linda McMahon, who sits in the president's cabinet. <laughs> that, that, Linda that Linda McMahon. McMahon. That okay. Linda McMahon. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Can you imagine that? The biggest donors. And it's I, not even close. I can't imagine it. And I also imagine that this whole world we're living in was written by Vince McMahon. It must have been. It's all a work. Yeah. It must. It has to be. It's a work. It has to be. Like, what's going to happen is hmm. it's going to come out when Mueller has his report, the Russians help Trump, and Mueller's going to be in Congress. He's going to be given his report, and at the end of it, he's going to pull off the mask. <laughs> it was me, Austin. <laughs> it was me all along, Austin. That's it. <laughs> and you know what? If that happens, yeah, I will admit that Vince McMahon is the greatest. Oh, he's the greatest of all time. But uh, until he's then, the puppet master. Yeah, but <laughs> That's it. Are they kidding? I mean, what is going on here? So, do federal indictments come down on the WWE when they start putting well, here's Trump the thing. and his people in jail, which they're doing right now? Here's the thing. Yep. If they donated, because Trump's their buddy. Sure. sure. If they donated to that because they just gave their money away, fine. Well, if they're using it to launder money, well, and that's where we're getting at here. What's really going on? And I really, in this day and age. They don't think someone could connect the dots? Oh, my God. If I'm Vince McMahon, I'm pissed Trump ever ran for president. Absolutely. Because he's blown up my spot. He messed everything up. Everything. He was the he was the useful idiot. Mm. A lot of people made a lot of money with that idiot. The Russians made money. Mm. The McMahons made money. Everybody. Everybody. Mm. Russian hookers made money. Yeah. Stormy Daniels made money. Mm. Now this guy wants to be famous. He wants to be president. And you know what? People are going to jail. Ego. People are, you know what I mean? It's something like, what is it, 35 indictments so far and, and like 29? Yeah. 29 or no? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> the and, and they get going, some, and they get this, the, the, this mystery company yes. that yes. they're trying to hold, mm. which is interestingly enough, the right leaning Supreme Court put a, a stay on that subpoena. But I think in the end, they'll have to go with what they get. And I think it's Deutsche Bank. It's got to be Deutsche Bank. It's and if it's be. not Deutsche Bank, yep. or if it is Deutsche Bank, mm. A lot of people are in trouble. Can you imagine if Vince McMahon gets indicted? <laughs> I, can't I, hope that no, I hope that doesn't happen, by <laughs> the way. I would hope that Vince McMahon would be smart enough not to get himself that deep in. This is the guy that's putting on events in Iran. Yeah. And speaking of, what about the Iranian connection here? Mm. Why is the WWE so suddenly interested in Iran? Why what? is Donald Trump buddy-buddy to Iran? Mm. Where's all this money going? I think it's a circle jerk of money with these guys. Well... We're going to have to wait and see what happens here. But I'll just say Here's this. a question. Uh-oh. Does Trump, doing some nefarious double deal business dealings with the Iranian government. Or Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. But, I'm sorry, did I say Iran? Saudi is where they did it. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia. My mistake. Uh, and he says, uh, listen, if you do this deal, my friend Vince will put on a, li- a show for you. A nice show. They're all in it together. And by by him touching him with the hand, now Vince is up to his neck. Look at you, you're you're MacGyver. You 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 figured it all out there. Tell you about if I know what, if Kojak. I know if I know what if I know what you know country I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure. good. But other than that, <laughs> folks, you heard what I think. And what do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm a jerk? Yes. Maybe something in between. <laughs> Head over to Facebook. Head over to Twitter. Type in Duke Loves Ross and let me know. What do you mean? Yes. I'm feeling sick. Can I leave? Go to hell. You know what? I got I got somebody special in the line. Mods Factory. The man of the hour, Mr. Danny Cage. What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. How are you, sir? I'm loving life, my friend, loving life. Listen, Danny, you know, for a while there, you were teasing a a major announcement that was going to change the landscape of pro wrestling as we knew it. And, you know, I sent you messages online. I'm not sure if you got those, but you ignored me. Um, of course I did. I, 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 I <laughs> called Rightly you. So. I called you and you hung up on me. Uh, what's this, What's the deal with this, Danny? Why didn't you let the Duke know what was going on before him? I couldn't let anybody know. I didn't let anybody know. I, I thought we were friends, man. Yeah, I have plenty of friends. 
they didn't know either. <laughs> well, can the we... only ones the only ones that knew were people inside the Monster Factory. Wow. So so let's tell and the whole all, world. And they again. all kept their mouths shut. So that just goes to show you how loyal they are. Let's tell the, the world again what you are now the manager of operations of. All right. So now I'm the operations manager of the ROH Dojo. I coach over there, handle social media. Uh, they also, we uh, run the Future of Honor shows at the world famous Monster Factory. That's the new home of it. And uh, they will be. Uh, all tapings will go down there, and we are putting them together now. The first one was December 15th, the first set of tapings. Uh, we got two tapings out of that. So uh, going forward, we're moving ahead with that and uh, getting the ball rolling at the Arledge Dojo, uh, rebranding it, putting it all together. Uh, and we got a great team over there, coaches, and I'm just really looking forward to everything coming together plus still doing things at the world famous monster factory so it's uh and i signed an exclusive contract now so i deal directly with, ju with just ring of honor wow so so it's a direct pipeline now um so i'm just uh i'm really happy about it and and it makes sense because uh ring of honor does not train people new you have to have experience and and go there and get there from uh basically being um uh, Referred by uh, one of the four affiliated schools, us being one of them, the One Fall Power Factory in Georgia, uh, Bubba and Devon's 3D Academy in Florida, and then Maryland Championship Wrestling, of course, in Maryland. So that's the only way to get in. Danny, when or, you... impress, or impress the people at the camp, and then all the coaches get together and we select who's going to train there. When you took over the, the world-famous Monster Factory, uh, it, it definitely took a step back from when it was in its heyday before then. So you, you were essentially starting from scratch. And oh, yeah. When I, when I purchased the Monster Factory, uh, we had the name only. It was uh, being run at another facility uh, by other people, and uh, Larry took the name back and sold it to me. And basically, I had uh, two leftover students from somebody else, and uh, that was it. And they were all paid up. So I had no paying students, and it was December of 2011, and went f and no building, no ring, no nothing. So I went, I went from there. And you, and you turned it into legitimately the biggest um, wrestling school and, and a place that everybody wants to be affiliated. You got so many... Wrestlers who were in Japan, Ring of Honor, WWE. I mean, legitimately, you make stars. So let me ask you this, Danny. What are some of the lessons that you learned when you took over the Monster Factory that you're going to apply to the Ring of Honor dojo to kind of give yourself a leg up? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to reveal too much, but I can tell you lessons I learned at uh, the world-famous Monster Factory. And then basically everything that we do over at the Arledge Dojo is basically presented, we discuss, and then we go from there. It's not just one stroke, you know what I mean? Because uh, Delirious is still the head coach over there. Uh, when they brought me in, you know, I had suggestions and, and bring different uh, methods to them that we use at the World Famous Monster Factory. Because in the very beginning of the Monster Factory, um, I had the mentality of like, hey, man, we're just a wrestling school. Um, we're going to teach them to wrestle, mm -hmm. and everything else is on them. And within two years of that, I was realizing that we weren't really doing any strength and conditioning. Um, we weren't really doing all that much other than what we were doing inside the ring, uh, which was some wrestling and, and going over stuff. Um I quickly learned that that's all fine and good to say, hey, it's on the kids to do that. But ultimately, when the kids leave and they go somewhere and they blow up or they look like crap or they're not in shape, uh, sure, the kid's embarrassed. But in the long run, they're going to go, where does he train at? And they're going to say the monster factory. So then it falls on me. So, so, I, just, so I decided no one was ever going to blow up again at our school so i implemented a lot of strength and conditioning that i got when i was an amateur wrestler 
and got some from ROH, got some from WWE and some other coaches like Rip Rogers and Les Thatcher and Dr. Tom. So if I'm a wrestler coming to the, coming to the, the facility, walk me through a day in the life of a student. That, you know, what, what are they going to get? Like you're speaking to all that added stuff that you worked in eventually to figure out, you know, how to make it work right. Okay. Okay. So basically, if you're brand new, you're probably not going to uh, get through our entire warm up. And, I, and, and we tell them that. And I always tell everybody, like, I don't need you to be perfect. I don't need you to do everything great. But if you give me effort, I'm never going to yell at you. I'm never going to scream at you. But if you quit, I'll get, I'm going to have issues. Hmm. I can see that you're going to be struggling. I might tell you, you know, sit down a little bit, rest, walk a little bit, don't run. Let me make the call, not you. Um, so basically, we start with usually a 10 to 15 minute uh, jog warm up. Uh, during that is high knees, shuffles, broad jumps, some sprints, um, wheelbarrows, push ups, stuff like that. Then we'll go to rolls in both r- rings. After you do a set of rolls in one ring, you jump into another, jump out of that ring, jump down, grab a medicine ball, sprint to the end of the arena and back and then get in the other ring and do it. We do about 10 sets of rolls. Wow. Um, then after that, we do body weight, uh, which is not running but walking. Uh, find somebody your weight, fireman carry. Um, you're basically walking uh, uh, probably about, I don't know, about a couple hundred feet uh, with somebody on your back, walking them back, then you switch. Then you're doing wheelbarrow walks with the person from one end of the place building to the other. Then what we do is we circle up, we do squats, push-ups, crunches, stretch out, water break, then we get started with training. So that's our (laughs) warm-up, which is about 30 to 40 minutes. I'm exhausted just listening to it. I'm telling you, I've already blown up, Danny, just listening to that. He's tapped out already. (laughs) That's our warm-ups. Out of an average class size, how many people can't make it through that? Well, through the gate. everybody can yeah. when once they're there a while. Sure, sure. Um, but usually if we have new students, yeah. say like we have five new students, I'd say three won't make it through. Wow. But now, I mean, we have a lot of new students, um, and pretty much everybody's getting through maybe but like one or two. Mm. It's pretty good. I mean, but you need you need that tough conditioning. We you know we've talked about this before too that a lot of people get into the business or want to get in the business not realizing the physicality of it, and and that if you you need to get through that warm up, you need to understand well, it's that only, it's not only just the warm up and the strength and conditioning. It's the discipline. Right. It's it's working at a goal. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be monotonous every day coming in and doing this. Mm-hmm. It's going to drive you insane. Guess what? Welcome to wrestling. It's conditioning you for when you get on the road and you do things that you're going to be motivated to work your ass off to keep getting better. It's a business. Yep, top to bottom. We're talking to uh, Danny Cage from the world-famous Monster Factory and also the uh, manager of operations for Ring of Honor Dojo. Now, Danny, uh, Ring of Honor has the second largest footprint in all of uh, American professional wrestling organizations. How important is it to have an in-house dojo where you're developing your talent from the inside? There, it's it's key. I mean, my biggest thing was I want people to be talking about who's coming to Ring of Honor next, who's getting called up next from Future of Honor. I want there to be instant buzz when these start hitting uh, the internet, Facebook, you know, uh, YouTube, the Honor Club. Uh, everything I, I want everybody to be talking about. Oh my God, I can't wait. I can't, you know, uh, them chattering like, Hey, call him up. We need him on the main roster. You know, I want to see, you know, Marty versus, you know, this guy, I want to see Kenny King versus this guy. You know, I want to see Kelly Klein versus her. I want there to be buzz. I don't want it to be, uh, gee, I wonder who they're going to sign. I want it to be, man, who's going to step up. Who's going to get called up from the future of honor. That's what I want. Well, you're really developing something that's similar to NXT for the WWE. And and now with Ring of Honor, uh, the footprint, I mean, owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. So this isn't – I just watched Ring of Honor yesterday. I got to see uh, Sumi Sakai uh, uh, defend her title and do some things and what have you. And I was on local TV on Nesson here in in Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? So it's it's interesting that here you are in a position where you're going to develop the next generation of wrestlers in that organization that, quite frankly, is is literally the second biggest organization in the nation. It's amazing there. Yeah, and, you know, you talk about NXT and stuff like that, but, I mean, or, uh, you know, the Performance Center, but to be honest uh, with you, we, we uh, opened up, I moved into that building around uh, 2012, and we were implementing some of the same things that they're doing at our place prior to that even opening. Uh, like I said, I just took a lot from everybody and molded it in. A lot of those exercises and training methods came from actually amateur wrestling. Mm. So that's that's where my main discipline comes from. That's where I think I I set myself apart is because not only am I running it as a business, but I'm also running it as a coach uh, and not just some guy teaching them some moves and some holds because I think anybody can do that. Well, you know, I know that this business is a tough one and people like to bitch or, you know, they, they, they like to talk a lot of shit. And I know some people have talked shit about you undeservedly, but, you know, saying that you haven't personally wrestled much. And I think you were getting oh, yeah, into that a little care. bit saying, you know, uh, what do you what do you think? it is? You know, I think that you don't have to have been a certain something to be good at getting other people to 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 be good at it. And so well, here's my big thing. I like somebody had mentioned it to me. Well, you know, it's going to be tough for you because like people aren't going to listen to you because you never did X, Y or Z. And I go, well, I don't care that I never made a lot of money wrestling in the ring. Mm-hmm. But what I have done is the people that I have coached and have been under my learning tree have gone on to make a lot of money wrestling in the ring. Right. So if you're coming to me to coach, to get learn wrestling, I'd figure you'd come to the guy who has a track record of pe- getting right. people signed. Right. I mean, I've had the most people signed out of any coach in the world in the last seven years, and I've only been doing it seven years. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> well, it's, you know, George Martin, right? I mean, he was a musician. There was no Beatles without George Martin. You, you right. can't knock it, the guy it, it, and say, do you want hits? You want to make a lot of money? What do you want? Right. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, I, I, I could easily just sit in there and teach them some cool moves. Right. And make myself feel cool. But like them saying, man, that was so awesome when he taught us cool. But where are you going with it? You're not going anywhere. What's the business? You're not learning the other important things in pro wrestling. Like our kids, like I'm so confident in our kids, like, I know that, like, I could not make it on a show day, and they would still run the show smoothly. Right. Because I've taught them how to run a show, how to organize it, how to time out a show, how to write it, when the sound, you know, when the music hits, when it goes off, when to open doors, when to do this, everything, how to run a show top to bottom. Pretty much everybody who's on our roster knows how to do it. It's that critical thinking that's missing a lot of the time. You know, like, well, how do I think on my feet? You know, hey, if the main guy yeah. ain't here, well, we got to figure out how to get the show got to go on. How do we do it? Yeah. And that's management. And it's, it, it, all that stuff flows organically. Yep. And, and you're, you're not going to be able to do that if all you worry about is, that, is, is you know, some high spot or, or making a gift. Good call. Good call. Danny, before we let you go, talk to us about women's wrestling and, and where you see it going in 2019. I mean – there's speculation that um, some other promotions are going to literally have their biggest show of the year, the main event, be women. Uh, Ring of Honor is, is is reinvesting in their women as well. You know, there's a new title and, and what have you. Talk to us about uh, where you see things going for the industry itself in 2019. I love it. I, I just think it's long overdue, but it wasn't because, like, women were, quote, unquote, being held down or anything like that. It was just that if you only have a small pool of people that are training to become wrestlers, you have a smaller uh, amount of uh, possibilities of having success. Now there's a lot more girls training. And I think, and I believe, and I, and I, I will stand by this, that it all started again with amateur wrestling. Girls started amateur wrestling, started doing judo, started doing martial arts, which then got them to say, Hey, you know what? I can do this. Um, and, I, and I think it's long overdue. The problem I see is um, it being too diluted now. Um, I'd like it to be the best of the best as opposed to just people thrown, women thrown on just for the sake of them just being women. And I, I think we saw that with what the WWE is doing. I mean, they have the best women athletes around. Mm. I mean – 
they're insane. Uh, the matches they can put on are incredible. And, and to see how quick Ronda Rousey picked it up is amazing to me. Um, but that's a very high bar now that we set. So I think um, as pioneers, as as people, you know, going into this new territory, I think, you know, they, they really have to step up their game because now it's going to really be, get, be being scrutinized even more, especially when – shows are going to be revolving around them in the main event. Wow. Wow. Danny, if, if potential wrestlers out there want to get in touch, if they want to go through the Monster Factory, if they want to make it up to the ROH Dojo, what's the best way they can get in touch? They can call me or text me, 609-471-7904, or they can email me, monsterfactorytv at gmail.com, or hit me up on Twitter, the Danny Cage. Or Instagram, real Danny Cage. Wow. And, and and lastly, Danny, how, how are the uh, ladies at home taking all this stuff here? Because I know you got you got a great family. How are they taking uh, the big news? Uh, they they uh, <laughs> they like it, but you know they also have to understand I have to be away a little bit more because you know the ROH Dojo is in Maryland, so sometimes I'm leaving for a couple days to go there uh, to coach. So. Uh, but they like it. They think it's cool that, uh, you know, I'm getting, like, uh, how can I say, uh, better known for doing this. You know, it was, it was hard times in the beginning, uh, real hard times. You can say famous, uh, Danny. You can say famous. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you that. You're famous. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, they're, you know, my one daughter's a cheerleading now. The other one's having a meltdown because the uh, – her hair got too cut too short during uh, getting her hair done, and she's worried that uh, kids are going to make fun of her uh, when she goes to school. Oh. Uh, so, you know, that's when reality hits you that uh, <laughs> this wrestling thing isn't that big, and uh, haircuts are the important thing. Perfect. Perfect. His name is Danny Cage. <laughs> Cage, you're a good man. Uh, 2019 is going to be a big year for you, man, so keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, man. I'm uh, about to head out the door right now to training, and uh, – I will talk to you guys soon, and uh, if I don't speak to you, have a happy New Year, man. Awesome, you too. Thanks, Thanks, Danny. You got it, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You know, Danny is such a great guy, but I'm still upset with him that he did not tell me the news before he broke it. You're not his friend. Well, I am his friend. No, you're not. I mean, he said it himself, but he has a lot of friends. He's an acquaintance of yours, maybe. We're friends. He's got, listen, he's got real friends in, in high places. You're neither. The thing about Danny Cage, this what is this, the third time he's been on the show, I would say that that means that we're friends, okay? Do you go to the bank? Yeah. You're the bank teller? Mm-hmm. Go there a couple times a month, maybe? Yeah. You're course. not friends with the bank teller, okay? That's the business they're in. Shout out to, to uh, Kelly, my <laughs> banker. Yeah. She's, she's great. What do you mean? Don't tell me who my friends are. What's wrong with you? You don't have any friends, so I can't tell you anything. Who? Somebody said that to somebody the other day. I thought that was hilarious. I think it was Shannon Sharp said that to Skip Bayless. <laughs> what do you say? I DVR uh, that show. Uh, uh, Just for the greatest undisputed. hits. Yeah, exactly. And he, and he said, Skip Bayless, you have no friends. Yeah. That's it. He's I'm probably not, right. I'm not Skip Bayless. Well, you wish. Give me a break. Listen, folks, you know, I got to keep the Boston bad boy going because he's sick. And I feel like if, if we stop, then he, I don't know what's going to happen to this guy. So, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to pump you up. Maybe I'll rest. Maybe <laughs> I'll uh, I'll feel better about myself and my life, and I won't do the stupid show we're anymore. Gonna, we're going to treat you like a workhorse. We're going to pump you up with some stuff and keep you going there. What am I, John Bones Jones? That's what happens. That's what happens. He's a dirty bastard. You no, know, he wants to fight Brock Lesnar. Does he? And who tested positive before as well. Good. Two dirty bastards fighting each other. That's, I think Vince McMahon should put that fight on. And you know what? It should be refereed by old dirty bastard. Oh. Wow. Look at that. Think about that. Maybe I got your money. That's it. <laughs> I saw Creed 2. Did you? I did. I haven't seen the first one. I saw well, I saw the first one as well, but I saw Creed 2. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Oh, boy. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try not to spoil it, but I'm going to tell you, because this, this is uh, Drago is back with his son. Is remember it, Drago from yeah, yeah. Rocky IV? Yeah, was it Rocky of course IV? I remember Ivan Drago. I must break you. I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, and his son? His son this is ridiculous. battles Apollo Creed's son, Adonis Creed. It's, it, we mean it's ridiculous. It was awesome. Stop that. Drago Jr. is not the bad guy in that movie. Huh. You have to see it to understand it. All right. A lot of people are missing this. He's not the bad guy. Well, Drago wasn't really the bad guy either. Boy, he killed 
Apollo Creed in the ring. Yeah, but he killed him in the ring because... They wouldn't throw in a towel. Exactly. They wouldn't throw the damn towel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Well, happens. and also, he's just a pawn. That's the whole point, isn't sure, it? Sure, sure. Can't blame the guy. It's a great movie. All right. Both of them. Is it is, is Ivan, is Drago played by... Uh, yeah, Dolph, Dolph, Dolph Lundgren is, is back. Yeah. There's a guy still in good shape, that guy. And you know who else was in it? Brigitte Nielsen. Really? She makes a cameo. How's she looking? She was a little scary. They, on they the, cleaned her up. She was a little scary on the. Uh, they cleaned her up. The Flavor Flav show. They cleaned her up. <laughs> so you know the the character Lana in the WWE. Yeah. Is a takeoff from Brigitte Nielsen in Rocky IV. Who Stallone was actually married to. He was married to her for a little while. A little sure. while. Yeah. Then he realized she was on a lot of drugs. You know what? A friend of mine once told me, "Marriage is not a shirt that you put on and then take off." I like that. You like that? That's, that's very <laughs> profound. <laughs> Someone way more profound than you. <laughs> That's a good one. You know? <laughs> hey, shout out to uh, Rusev. Rusev mm -hmm. is the new United States heavyweight champion. Really? He won on his birthday. Who's on the, uni Day. Who's the uh, universal champion? Brock Lesnar. Even Still. though he hasn't fought anybody from off Don't this planet. Don't start this crap now. I'm just you, wondering. You, you know, we did this two years ago, and now here we are back again. It's like deja vu with you. Don't start this crap now. I never stopped. I never stopped. You're, you're something else. You know that? You know, I want to ask you something because someone asked me this, and I, I, I wasn't sure if I had the right answer. Okay. So we just had Christmas. Yep. The three wise men. Now, if you're not familiar with Christmas, let me give you a little background information. <laughs> I know, right? Here we go. The three wise men yep. visit baby Jesus in the manger. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. They bring him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, my mother says to me, my mother's not a particularly religious person. She says, why did, they, why did they bring him gold, frankincense, and myrrh? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what sense does that make? And correct me if I'm wrong, it's because they were expecting to meet a king. Yes. Okay, good. Of course. I'm not sure I had my, my scripture right. That was the point. Sure. But what happened to the gold, frankincense, and myrrh afterwards? Did they get to keep it? Did Mary and Joseph get to buy a little house with it? I mean, it was worth a lot of money. What happened to it? You should, you should research this and write a book. I would if I didn't do the stupid podcast. That you see, you're like keeping me from history. making money. No, you're in a contract. I what happened about that. to the gold frankincense and myrrh? You know what? We'll put a poll up there. What if we did an Indiana tells. Jones movie where he goes to find the gold frankincense and myrrh? Really? Why not? Wow. That's pretty cool. No. I should have them sue you. Who owns Indiana Jones? Disney? They should sue you for that. For what? For even bringing up their name. You're not saying You brought up their that. name. I didn't bring up their Don't name. Don't start that crap. A uh, shout out to um, Prince Charlie. Oh, boy. Just had a birthday. His birthday's on Christmas. That poor kid. <sighs> Can you believe that? Got screwed. Christmas. The only person who never really got screwed for being born on Christmas? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else had to live with, well, you're getting presents and presents. Like like Charlie. Poor Charlie. How old is he now? Oh, Charlie's at, at least um eighty two. Really? No, he's not that old. He's gonna kill me for that. <laughs> 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 poor Charlie. Charlie just had a baby. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, which we shot out the baby as well, and he just had a birthday. Oh, there you go. And he just had Christmas. Boy, see, he's getting hit from he's every getting angle. Hit from every <laughs> angle, this poor guy. You know, not only does the kid not get his birthday, yeah, he's got to take care of the kid. Christmas now, he got nothing. He got looked over the whole nine right yards. Over. The guy can't win. So, hey, we're putting you up in lights right now, Charlie. That's right. So, we got to close out uh, 2018, Boston Bad Boy, by you ending like the show. To, no, you oh. know I like to do this. Top wrestler of the year. Okay. This is a tough one, but I'm going to go with AJ Styles. You know what the best part about that is? What? No one has asked for your opinion. Everyone of asked the top my, wrestler. Everyone of the year. asked my opinion on that. Stop no that. One. Don't pull that crap. Uh, actually, the top female wrestler of the year. I'm. A, I got a surprise for this one. Folks are going to be like, "What? Carmella? Huh? Okay. Shout out to uh, my main man, who's her dad. There, he, you know, the brawler fifty four on. Uh, you're just trying to get with the dad. Is that why you're He's doing this? He's a good this? man. He's a good man. You're just trying to Paul get with the dad. Man. He's a good man. He's you good have man. a man crush on the woman's father, so you're just trying to like Listen, using her. When as a he pawn. shows up on the TV shows, he's like, "Dude, did you see me?" That's not. That doesn't happen. He says that to me. What are you talking about? You've never spoken to this guy. That's not true. I got a whole Twitter thread of me and him going back. And I forth. want you to print it out and bring it in. Next I want time. him to come on the show. Paul, come on the show. He's a good man. He's a good man. Uh, the most improved wrestler, Ruby Riot. All right. They took her from NXT, brought her up to the main roster. No one expected her to do anything, and she's had just a tremendous career. She's MVP. 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 There you go. You said it. Tag team of the year. New day. Look at you. Why not? Why not? Why not? 
Well, you know what? They've got name recognition. It's true. And they've, they've built that pretty And well. I feel like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, tag teams were a bigger thing back in the day. Yeah, they haven't really been a big thing. They haven't thing been a thing thing lately. No. But in the new year, WWE is going to make women's tag team. Oh, that's not a thing that exists? It's not a thing that exists. Really? They're going to do it finally. So I think they're going to reinvest the, in tag team. Where wrestling. have they missed the boat on you, two girls? You got girls. all these women on your on your roster, and you don't make a women's tag team division. What are you doing? Because it, there's the famous you know question: What's better than one beautiful woman? Hmm. Two. It's the only thing that's better. I care about them being great athletes and wrestling. No, but what I'm saying is, you are. get beautiful, talented women. Yeah. Why not? Why are we not doing the thing? Well, I you, agree. you can give them new gimmicks. You can sure. give them the whole thing. Sure. Sure. That's re- that's ridiculous. Well. But it is Vince McMahon, and Don't he doesn't that. know what he's doing. So. And Vince McMahon is owner of the year, which he is every year. <laughs> he's the only owner. <laughs> he's owner of the year, which, listen. I bet he gives himself that trophy. I, I, I bet he has, like, in his office, like, uh, owner of the month. With a bust. Yeah, with a little, little, bust bu- like a little plaque yeah. and a bust. Of his exactly. Oh, for the 400th year in a row, yeah. consecutively, uh, 400th month in a row, Vince is the boss of the month club. Damn right. Hey. It's a delu- deluded world he lives in. And I pointed this out last week. Uh, you know, Monday Night Raw finished number one again. USA was the number one um, entertainment um, cable channel. Number one overall. Who, who are they competing against? Uh, everybody. TLC? Everybody. E, everybody. Oh, E. Oh. They're, they're you're the only, by the way, you're everybody. the only one watching E because you watch your stupid shows. Don't start that crap. Anyway, USA is number one, and Monday Night Raw and um, SmackDown – they're the ones that help them maintain that level. So for all you punks out there who say that the WWE is not doing the right thing, a.k.a. Boston Bad Boy, mm. they're number one. They're What's number it? one. It, you know what? Al Capone was the number one bootleg in, in, in Chicago. What it, Guy made millions of dollars. doesn't mean it's right or it was done correctly. I don't know about that. You know what I mean? Like Just because they make a lot of money because they're number one. Sammy Sosa was hitting dingers out of the park. Him and McGuire, they were number one. Did you see Sammy Sosa use that skin lightning cream crap? What the hell's wrong <laughs> no. with this guy? What the hell's wrong with you, Sammy Sosa? Really? Yeah, he, he doesn't even look like he's of this planet anymore. He could be, we should put Sammy Sosa in there against Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. Because Sammy <laughs> Sosa looks like he could be E.T., this guy. Really? Unbelievable. I didn't really, all right. That whole skin lightning thing? Yeah. I always thought that that was just made up with the whole Michael Jackson thing. In oh, other no. words, that was just a derogatory thing that people used against Michael Jackson, who actually had a... An he actual had a skin condition. Skin condition. Yeah, yeah. But people made fun of him saying he was using quote unquote skin. But that didn't realize it exists. Yeah, it definitely exists. That's it's insane. It's, well, I mean, you got people who put on fake tanner. But the problem with skin lightening is you can't bring it back. That's what I'm saying. You, that's, you're, you're it's not like you're putting makeup on. It's like you're bleaching your, your skin. That's what you're doing. That's bizarre. You bleach your, your, your black jacket there and it's going to be white. Well, same thing. You Crazy. Ble- you bleach down there, you know. What? Just clean it up. Stop that. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Jesus Christ. In 2019, I got, a, I got a prediction here. Oh, boy. Asuka is going to be the wrestler of the year next year. Really? You think the world's ready? I think so. I think so. And Velveteen Dream. Boy, you're really, you're really, in, you're really hitching your wagon to this guy. I like this guy, man. I think he's great. He's awesome. It's not a matter of how good they are. It's never been a matter of that. It's how they're used or misused. Well, as long as— And they'll always be misused because Vince McMahon doesn't know how to run the company properly. Well, he's going to be too busy with XFL, so he, he couldn't He's going to be too himself. busy getting punched in the face by AJ Styles. Well, that too, which was still pretty awesome. If you, know, you could send me that on a loop, I'd really well, appreciate Vince it. Vince smiled after he got punched in the face. He enjoyed it. That's, not, that's a man who's not well. <laughs> that's a man who's not well. Happy New Year to everyone. Listen, I got I to gotta put this PSA out there. Oh, boy. It's not amateur hour, folks. Take an Uber. Mm. As Spice Adams would say, Uber. Take a Uber. <laughs> please, please, don't drink and drive. Don't beat up your, your spouse or your neighbor. Don't uh, play with guns and do stupid stuff after you've gotten hammered. Just please. Can what we- are you going to be doing now? Sitting home with your cat watching crocheting ch- uh, programs? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty which, is, much. which is a normal night for you. That's what I do. What I get yourself some chicken wings or something. Yeah, Chinese food. Chinese food. Yep. yep. Just depressing and alone. Stay away from the world. That's what happens. You know, you're you're and you wonder why you have no friends. Go to hell. Go to hell. I'm gonna be tying the the, the red uh what do they call that? Tying the bow around the uh, door handle. That's right. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna be doing then. Uh, you Please. better quit while you're ahead. I know, I know. But seriously, folks, take care of yourselves, be kind to others. Don't drink and drive. Please don't drink and drive. Uh, we will be back in the new year with some great guests. Really? Listen, I got a wrestler who 
She wrestles and she does sign language. At the same time? She's a big deal with the sign language. Wait, she's doing sign language while she's wrestling? I don't know if she, if she combined the that two seems that pretty, uh, But she's pretty big in the signing uh, community. And I want to know what that's all about. Big in the signing community. I, I want to know what that's By all about. By the way, I learned how to say swear words in sign language. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you know how to say bullshit? No. It's this. I don't want... Why, why are you showing me this? Stop It's that. funny because people are going to be wondering what I'm doing. They're going to Google it. And it's actually funny. You sound like Kenny now. You know what you are? There you go. I'm signing you. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. Happy New Year, everyone. Mr. Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.